Synmax Competition Racing Motor Oil 20W50. Now, this product is what we would call our economy racing oil product. It's designed for racing or heavy-duty engineering specifications as required by the engine builder or the original equipment manufacturer. This works for 1550 or 20W50 needs. Very good for alcohol and methanol fuels uh, and hydraulic lifter applications. Further, for use within a classic hot rod, street rod, or Harley Davidson that does not have catalytic converters. Now, this product is what we call a performance synthetic. In other words, it's not a group four uh, or aerospace oil. It's like a group three synthetic. It, in, it is an extreme duty racing formulation. It includes polyx premium viscosity stabilization, diamond-like additives for maximum uh, anti-wear protection, and the lowest coefficient of friction, high zinc, at least 1,500 parts per million, which is double to triple that of your modern street oils, it includes both ZDDP and synthetic zinc, very good protection for the camshaft, a flat tappet, solid lifter, a hydraulic lifter, roller uh, cam, uh, roller with including the needle bearings and the entire valve train and the springs. Premium protection for the piston, wrist pin, and uh, skirt of the piston against the cylinder wall. Uh, this is a professional off-road use only product not designed for modern API street use, but could be used in applications without the catalytic converter. For more product information, check out the Synmax videos and presentations. On this specific product, please review or download the brochure, technical data sheet, and MSDS documents. To find out how the aerospace advantage for motorsports through diamond-like additives providing the lowest coefficient of friction with the maximum protection in rolling and sliding applications, that is to follow. Here we go. This was a solid uh, lifter metal surface, okay? And uh, it's going to show fretting on the left versus pretty much brand new. Now, what happened was both of these motors were run uh, with 520 or 520 or 530 oil. I'm not sure. Uh, a NASCAR engine. Okay, we we're talking like uh, it was actually a like a uh, 800 horse engine. It was a dyno run, and so it simulated in the dyno for 600 miles uh, or 700 miles of operation. But here's what happened. On the left, the, the lifter on the left had micro fitting on the surface wear. Now this was from frictional heat. Okay, you see the crown that was there? You see where the cam would stroke on the side, then it would hit the crown, then it would come off of, of, the, of the lifter. Now that's similar to a piston crown and that's called fire flash degradation. All right. And then on the right, you see the oil with the PolyX technology and the DLA technology. This lifter was like brand new. You say, does that make a difference? Well, we've got guys in short track racing that run about anywhere from, you know, 800 to 1,000 miles a year. And they're on their third year on their lifters. So the oil almost paid for the lifter. You know, the cam's 1500 bucks, and the lifters are 500 You know, it, you're buying technology. You're not just buying a bottle with a label, all right? Now, you can see the lifter on the right, the DLA additive, allowed the surface to operate cooler with greater protection. How's that evident? Watch this. Now, this is very interesting. Here's 50 times magnification of the lifters. Now, the lifter on the left 
has what we call microfretting surface wear. It's from frictional heat or heat oxidation, which means thermal breakdown of the metal surface. Um, similar to a piston, piston crown, the terminology is called fire flash degradation. What's actually happening is that these lifters are, are, are very expensive metal machining to get them to the point to handle what they do. I mean, you can see the machining scars that they do, and the reason they have those machining scars, like on the right, is so that those uh, cross hatches are able to hold the oil, and then the oil that's held is supposed to protect that surface. So the additive package on the left obviously was not sufficient enough to do it. You might say, Clayton, I know what it is. You must have had your 1,500 points high zinc on the right and not high zinc on the left. That is not true. Both of these had a racing additive package. The one on the left and the one on the right. The, they, they had the same amount of zinc. I'll tell you that right now. But the one on the right also had an aerospace synthetic zinc along with it for higher temperatures to run cooler. The one on the left would have had molly, a, 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 a probably a thousand parts of molly, and, and maybe thirteen to fifteen hundred parts of zinc. The lifter on the right would have had the diamond-like additive package, the synthetic zinc, and and in multiplied together, it was over the fifteen hundred. But this showed additive technology at the subsurface level. All right because obviously something worked on the right. Now here, you're going to see the metal fretting coming through. Now we're not coming against any company, but if these were your lifters, you really couldn't reuse the ones on the left, but you could reuse the ones on the right. Again, the lifter on the left, you could see where the metal started getting hot, it was exposing, it was opening up, and as the cam struck across it, it started to break off the metal. On the right, the additive technology, the aerospace advantage, was able to stay in the metal and not allow it to break. The picture says it all right there. Here's an engine that was a super late model motor designed for the CRA series rules. It's a 358 V8, 9 to 1 compression, and uh, uh, this is a, what we call a four-barrel 390 carburetor motor, but uh, with a special design, it's able to do 9,400 RPMs at 550 horsepower. Now, here's the deal. This is the camshaft. Now, there's two types of areas that we have on here. After 1,000 racing miles, the cam is still like brand new. You, you can look at the rollers, and it, it's like it wasn't even used. Furthermore, you can look at the slide areas of the roller uh, lifters in the slide areas where they go in the engine. It's, they're not even uh, barely touched. So this can be reused. You might say, Clayton, but I always thought on a camshaft it was on a solid lifter. Now, we're going to get into that in a minute you know, in the presentation. But we also have to remember the little needle bearings and, and how much punishment that they go through as well. This is DLA technology in action. Another very important area is the piston skirt and the uh, rod bearings. Okay, This is after 1,000 miles. Look at this skirt. It's like brand new. It's like it was never used. Why is that, Clayton? You know, it's because the diamond-like additive technology got into this skirt and it just protected it. You know, 9,400 RPMs, that's a long time. Now, I know these bearings are coated here, but you can see they're like brand new and literally could be reused again uh, if the engine builder would choose to do that. So here we've got a graft, and it uh, took a lot of money and time to make this. But over here you've got your Molly. Molly B. Denims, Organo Mollies. These are the products that uh, most of your race oils are going to be, your performance oils are going to be making out of. You know, whether it's Mobile or Schaefer's or uh, others, 
Um, they're going to be using some Molly in their oil. Royal Purple, uh, Joe Gibbs. Yet over here, we've got the Polyx. Okay, so when they had like a, a wear scar testing, all right, it was a Felix pin V block test for one hour with 500 pounds of load on it. Okay, the Sinmax provided with the Polyx 58% more protection with less additive package used. Amazing. The other thing that's interesting is there's three diamond carbonates inside of the diamond like additives, which is basically for cold, medium, and then extreme duty conditions. It takes a little bit of time for them to soak in, uh, about an hour. Once they finally soak in, you can see here in these cycles that in, in seconds of time down below, all right, that the coefficient of friction lowered to um, 0.14 coefficient. And that's pretty low. Molly is around 0.9. Now, the following presentation is to provide um, data uh, as supplied by Aeromotive Research. And it's the testing wear differences between Molly and other additives. The other thing is uh, to show the low coefficient of friction. And then also, we're going to talk about combustion deposit cleanliness which is very important at your higher RPMs. And then uh, last, you're going to see flat tapper performance um, with a Molly high zinc oil versus a, the advanced technology that the Synmax, the Diamond Lake Adams, and Polyx um, is able to do. Now we're going to talk about what we call combustion chamber cleanliness. That is very important for long-term sustained high RPM needs or also in your uh, automotive applications in your street car you know you have to keep your combustion clean uh, anytime that you've got a computerized situation with fuel injection and timing and sensors you have to keep it clean because if the racing additive package is over treated in the oil it will create piston hot spots causing spark plug contamination and detonation it will but the DLA polyx nanotechnology provides clean combustion operations. Now here was a test that was conducted. Again we had Molly and other types of Molly and then uh, on the bottom on the right that means a base oil with no additive at all. So what happened was is when we had Molly Bidenum there was like 50 milligrams of deposit in the combustion chamber. When we had Polyx all right, we had like 30 milligrams of deposit in the combustion chamber about 45% less contaminants. Why? Because it was a cleaner additive package. Now this translates to cleaner and more efficient combustion chamber operations. All right. So when you're running 9,000 RPMs, screaming along, or Formula One, whatever they're doing, uh, you're going to need all the help that you can get. 